Good day watchers, welcome back to the channel to today's video where I am featuring another piece from Phoebus, Phoebus watch company, which I think is, is one to keep an eye on. I, I've kind of followed these guys for a while now. I like to think they're uh, essentially the same age as my channel. Uh, they were the first to collaborate with me and they have grown. I wasn't sure whether they were going to succeed in growing, um, but they have, you know, and they've put out piece after piece. And here is the latest offering, uh, which they have kindly sent me and made available for this review. They have been impressive with the great white automatic watch uh, I reviewed a while back uh, with the metal bracelet. And so here is another example in that vein. So without further ado, let's open this up. And there is the watch there. So before I, I get onto that, you know, there's some warranty cards and uh, repair application forms, and that's the user manual. Uh, but uh, I just want to quickly show you, you can see there's different calibers, you know, the Seiko NH calibers, uh, they list the Mioto 9015. And then interestingly, they go into ETO movements which uh, is a curiosity to me because I don't think they have any ETA watches, but that is a uh, flag of their future intent, which uh, again, I am very, very interested to see how uh, they progress and you know, what they will put out. All right, so let's get on to this and take the watch out, uh, put these other things aside. Okay, so take a look at that green dial. So what we have here is the Phoebus Ocean Master Automatic Dive Watch model PY005A. A is the designation for green color. They do have this available in blue and black as well. So the MSRP for this watch is $399 USD. Uh, the sale price typically is $299 USD or if you buy it from the Europe website is $269. Euros. And I'll put the links for all these uh, down in the description. Uh, the movement in this case, they've gone with the Seiko NH35A. So that's a movement that I've had in many of watches that I've featured on this channel, uh, including Seiko owns uh, pieces, which in those are designated as the 4R36. In many Invictors that I've reviewed, uh, this is the NH35A. So 21600 beats per hour, 24 joules, 41 hour power reserve. There's nothing surprising there. You've heard all those stats before if you've uh, you know followed the channel or have come across this movement. It does have a quick set date which is implemented on the three o'clock window in this watch along with hacking and manual winding option. The crown in this case is sighted as you can see in the four o'clock position not the usual three o'clock position and uh, you can see this case actually features a helium escape valve. That's what that two o'clock uh, little crown is. It's a helium escape valve. Uh, it is a 44 millimeter across case. So I've measured this with calipers and that's 44 millimeters, not the 43 millimeter that they state on their website. Uh, the thickness is correct on the website. It is 15 millimeters on the thickness with 22 millimeter lug width, which is appropriate for this size watch. Uh, lug to lug length is 49 millimeters. As you've seen me pan this around, you see that the case as well as the bracelet is fully brushed. There is almost no polished surfaces on this. In fact, the only polished surface is really uh, on the surface of that helium escape valve. Everything else is actually um, a brushed surface on this. And that's not a bad thing, I think, for you know if you don't want too much bling. Uh, it's a little bit less prone to uh, obvious scratches. That's not a bad choice at all. You know, it just doesn't have that. Uh, I guess a lot of luxury watches may have more polished surfaces. I don't mind how they've implemented this in fully brushed. Um, it does have a screw in case back, which is pretty nicely etched there. You can see that Phoebus uh, octopus symbol in the middle there, along with some details, including sapphire crystal, right? A very tough solid case bag of course it's got the screwing crown and the helium escape valve and this watch is rated for 1000 meters similar to the initial ocean master which they provided which was their first watch they sent me that was a quartz watch this in this case they've upgraded to an automatic watch 
thousand meters, which is really the highest rating that I've had on the channel in, a, in any watch across this channel. The dial that you can see there is a pretty pleasant, uh, again, green sunburst. That initial watch that I had was a blue sunburst. This one's a green sunburst. I purposely chose green because I really haven't had a green watch dial on the channel, so I wanted a, a green example. The markings, as well as all the printing details and the logo are all printed. There is no uh, kind of uh, metal steel application on the dial there. But, you know, you know what have you, it, it, it's okay. You know, they've implemented it uh, pretty well there. The minute hand is, you know, surrounded in orange printing. You can already see that. Everything else is uh, steel or white on that dial. So that orange is to differentiate that minute hand, obviously. In this case, they have chosen to implement C3 Superluminova, which I, I'm really quite happy about. It functions very, very well, as you would expect Superluminova to function in the dark. And the crystal is no less than sapphire, as it was initially. Uh, the bezel insert, unfortunately, uh, is, is aluminium or a metal of some form. It is not a ceramic bezel insert. Uh, I think that's not you know, a major knockback on this, but, you know, uh, I guess a lot of their watches, they've stepped forward and put ceramic. Uh, this one, they've stayed with the metal insert. Now, compared with the PX005, which is the Quartz Ocean Master, this one, uh, as I've mentioned, has an automatic movement. It does have a greater thickness. So 15 millimeters thick is uh, one and a half millimeters thicker than the previous 13.5 millimeter. And that, I think, is mainly taken up by a thicker, more robust case back. I unfortunately don't have that original Ocean Master on me anymore, but on the pictures I reviewed, that seems to be where most of the additional thickness is. Um, you know, and then the original Ocean Master didn't have a specified loom, so it wasn't Super Luminova. This one, they have stepped it up to C3 Luminova. And then, of course, they've provided a very robust metal bracelet that the earlier watch had a pretty average rubber strap, which uh, was quite forgettable. I swapped it out to a NATO almost immediately. This one, pleasingly, they've actually provided a a metal bracelet, which is pretty nicely implemented. Oh, uh, again. So as you look at the bracelet, it's fully brushed, of course, along with the case to match it all up. Uh, you can see it is a three piece per link bracelet. It doesn't have screw pin adjustment. It does have push pins. Uh, none of the Phoebus I've seen so far have uh, screw links, but you know, maybe that's something they will step up to in the future. I wouldn't be surprised if they do, considering how they have uh, pushed the boundaries for value for money at their price points. So this bracelet, I think, you know, it's obviously not uh, a Rolex Oyster copy. It's, it's quite its own thing. I think it's a cross between uh, an Oyster and perhaps an Amiga Planet Ocean style of bracelet there. Uh, the class, if you've been looking closely, is a uh, stamp or press metal. Uh, this These pieces are a bit more solid, but uh, the actual main part of the class is, uh, you know, pressed metal, as you can see there, but it does have a pressed metal dive extension. You know, the other uh, earlier Phoebus watches I've had, I haven't had that extension. So they've, they've gone ahead and implemented that extra step there. Um, you know, push button release with a metal keeper there uh, for, you know, pretty good functionality. Let's do a quick wrist shot now as I put it on. And one of the things I really like about metal bracelets, of course, is the speed at which you can just slap it on your wrist. So there we have it. Apologies for the sunburn that I have on my hand there uh, from my recent holidays, but you know, take a look at it. Right, pretty robust, pretty big on the wrist, probably a bit borderline uh, for my 17 centimeter wrist. Right, but that's, there we have it. That's what it looks like on the wrist there. So, you know, what I've liked about this, well, again, it's the value features that Phoebus does offer. It, it's a Seiko movement, a, a very well-known, reliable movement. It's got sapphire on the crystal there, extreme water resistance of a thousand meters higher than anything I've reviewed, uh, matching only by the original Ocean Master. And, you know, that, that nice talking point of a helium escape valve, which is really a talking point for most of us rather than a functional uh, actual device there. It's got a very rugged dive style. So, uh, you know, you can see straight away, you know, very, I guess, thick, uh, 
metal all over, particularly the case back, you know, these kind of like curves that it has uh, have a, a muscular look, even though, you know, it's all curvy without any sharp 90 degree or straight line angles. It, it does have a muscular look to it. And the bracelet construction as well is something that I've really quite like, you know, just how they've done that bracelet. It is all solid, including the end links that you can see uh, at the back there. Uh, so, it, you know, I think if you're looking for a very tough looking over engineered dive watch for under 300 USD, uh, this is a good choice. Of course, it, you know, people have pointed out that this uh, seems to homage the Deep Blue ProTac dive watch, also a thousand meter dive watch. But actually, Phoebus have stated they use the same OEM factory. So they're not really a copy on homage. They simply use the same OEM factory. So, you know, that says to me that perhaps the full design is not completely patented, perhaps. Now, what I've, I guess the, the things that I point out uh, that are not the best about this watch, well, it is very heavy. It is about 205 grams on adjusted weight. I've taken out about you know, four or five of these links, and it still weighs over 200 grams. It definitely feel it on the wrist. You know, it is a very solid watch. Not everybody will like a watch that is 200 grams. Maybe, um, you know, you, you, you might prefer a lighter dive watch if you want a dive watch. Uh, the bezel is not the best, right? It's not the most solid feeling bezel. There's a bit of back play there. So it's, it hasn't been the most well executed bezel. That's really the same as it was in the first Ocean Master that I reviewed. And then lastly, I would say that whilst I like the sunburst uh, that they've uh, you know achieved on the dial, I don't think green is the best, right? Green to orange to steel to black, uh, I, I just think it doesn't go quite as well as blue and orange. Uh, that's, that's just me, uh, you know, of course that's extremely subjective, but you know, if I had the choice again, perhaps I would go with the blue or black model instead. And then lastly, I would say, if you look at the dial again, all the details are printed. There is no applied indices or applied anything on that dial. It, you know, Phoebus achieved a lot with their great white, including applied indices. This one steps back to printed uh, indices and brand and all that. So that's just something I'll point out. Guys, you know, th that's the watch. Let me know what you think of the Ocean Master. Perhaps you have this watch. I would be very interested to hear of your experiences and your feelings about this. Guys, if you like my videos, do consider subscribing. I put out new content weekly, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for watching. And as always, I will catch you next time.